Dave here, how are you? One of my daughters has just built a new home and she wanted a fence across the backyard and it was, Dad, can you give us a hand? Not a problem at all. So we set about designing out what kind of fence she wanted and it was to have very low impact. So she wanted to be able to see through it, got a nice view behind the property. So we wanted to keep it all low profile and how we did that, we designed a post and rail fence with chain link inserts. Now because it's not resisting any wind load because the chain link's not going not to act as a sail at all, not like palings on a fence, which would act as a sail. We, we didn't really need to have the posts too close together. Eight feet was fine. If it was a paling fence, I would have brought the, the posts in to maybe six feet apart just to give the fence a little bit more stiffness. First thing we had to do was to order all of the posts and the rails. We got the posts pre-mortised. In other words, some guy with a chain mortising machine knocked all these holes through the post to allow the rails to travel through. We told him the heights that we wanted and the size of the holes and that's how all of the posts arrived. The posts were 4 inch by 4 inch, 100 by 100 mil and they are all H4 treated pine. They're designed to go in the ground. The rails are H3 treated pine which means it's fine for exterior use but not allowed to contact the ground. The rails are 90 by 45 and we got them in six metre length so we just had plenty of room to muck around. Chamfered all of the uh, edges on the posts and around the top and then I got the Rotex out and I sanded the tops as well. Just It makes it nicer to be able to sit, I was going to say a beer but let's say a, a cup of coffee if I'm out watering the garden and I want to put my coffee down somewhere it's nice to be able to sit on top of a fence post and keep watering and go back to it. The things you need, a couple of people to give you a hand is always good and tools. You can do this with hand tools or you can do it with power tools. It really makes no difference. The hand tools just going to take a little bit longer. So the hand tools you'll need are a square, any kind of old hand saw, cross cut, make sure it's sharp, a level, a tape and a string line and a pencil. And you should be pretty right. Hammer as well and away we go. The other way is to use power tools, use a drill, uh, a circular saw and a brad nailer. Brad nailer is basically to nail the props onto the side of the post while we're sitting, waiting for the concrete to go off. Alright, first thing to do is we go to each corner, each end of the fence and we dig a hole 600 millimeters by 300 millimeters diameter, so it's two feet by one feet. And we use this guy. Now this is a post hole shovel and it works you drive it into the ground, drive it into the ground, close it up and lift and it pulls the dirt out with it, you drop the dirt off to the side. You keep doing that, the crust is hard but as you go down you'll find it gets easier and easier. Very good if you don't want to put your hand down inside a hole to clean it out in case there's funnel webs or what have you or animals living in the ground that you really don't want to make contact with. Okay, you can use an ordinary spade and a crowbar, that's fine as well, but you will have to get in there at the end and just clean out that hole at the bottom and that's the nasty bit. Now once we've dug those holes at either end, we're going to put a post in either end, we're going to turn the post upside down and we're going to cut the top off, oh sorry, we're going to cut the bottom off at the height above ground level that we want. Now we knew what kind of height we wanted so that was fine. The holes aren't going to be the same depth all the way through, so this is the easy way to do it. Cut it off with the uh, circular saw, pop the, turn the post over the right way now and drop it into the hole, brace it up and then put a level on it to make sure that it's dead straight, up and down, making sure that the holes, the mortises in the posts are all in line looking along the fence, not back towards the house. That'd be terrible. Half fill the hole up with water and pour rapid set concrete in. Now the rapid set is really good. Tamp it in, you'll find the water level comes up a bit. Another bag, we use two to three bags per hole. Tamp it in around and you'll find that within around about five to ten minutes it's set. So this is a part with no lollygagging, get it done. Then in 15 minutes, you can take all of those props off and use them on the next post. It is so good. So 
this is going to hold it steady for a while. You're building the fence, that'll be fine. It'll deliver its full load capacity in three to four weeks. Okay, so we have our outside posts done. Now we're going to nail a little profile onto the outside of either end and we're going to run a string line from one end to the other and we're going to pull it up tight and I'll show you here how to pull line, it up. It's pretty easy. I anchored the other end and I'm going to run to the outside of the fence rather than trying to work to the centre. So I've used this little profile that I've nailed onto the outside and put a screw down so I'm not going to bury a big screw into the post. A little bit crappy, a couple of small nails won't worry too much. Now how we do this, make it easy rather than just trying to wrap it around and all that kind of stuff. You put your finger there, hold onto the string and you turn. Turn and turn and turn and turn and turn. And then you hook the string over. See that? And then I'm going to pull. And so I'm pulling in with my left hand and away from where I'm going with my right hand. And the friction on this string is unbelievable. I'll drop it down. So it's right on the height. Keep pulling. I want to pull as much tension up in that line as possible so that there's no sag. Otherwise, if there's a sag in the line, all of my posts are going to look pretty ordinary. I'm going over 24 metres here at the moment. So I pull it up and I'm using a nylon um, string line, which doesn't break very easily. Okay, that's pretty taut. Get it all the way down at the bottom. Now, how do we anchor it off? We just pull this back this direction and let it go locks. How cool is that? String line, I just use nylon bricklayers string. That's what we call it in Australia, just a nylon brickies line. Once we've got that line run, we know where we're going to be on the ground as well. So we use a tape and we measure out now our 2.4 meter centers. And that's every 2.4 is where a post is going to go. So you can use a rock or you can just get someone else with a shovel just to knock a couple of holes in a little bit of a hole in the ground to mark it. Keep going along until you've got all of your holes located. Take the string line down. Then you get into it and <laughs> this is where your friends start digging the holes for you. I didn't dig any of the holes. Down you go. Now you're probably going to find you hit rock if you're in an area like I am in the mountains. Uh, if you're down on the plains where there's a lot of alluvial soil and clay has dropped, been deposited there over, over the eons, you probably won't hit rock, so you may not need a crowbar. But up in the mountains, definitely, we needed a crowbar. And dig the holes, as I say, 300 wide, 600 deep. And we're going to do the same process we did on the corners. We're going to drop the posts in upside down, mark them off to the string line, cut them, turn them up the right way, drop them in the hole, ensuring that the holes, the mortises are all in line still so that the rails can still go through. Prop them, prop the post with a level, making sure that the top of the post is in line with the outside of the string line, or sorry, the outside of the post is in line with the string line, or wherever your reference point is going to be, make it the same. Once you've got it in and plumbed, water in the hole, wrap it set concrete in and tamp it. Wait for it to go off. 15 minutes, the next hole should be dug by then, or you can go and dig the next hole, and we repeat this process right the way along. We also left a larger space for a gate. Make sure that you know the overall opening size for the gate and that will be in between the posts in that particular spot. Very important. If you're not going to have a gate, don't worry about that. Just keep on firing through. Now we've got all the posts up, string lines down, we can get the rails and start cutting them. Flush, oh sorry, just a, a butt on one end, just a nice 90 degree cut on one end. And the other end, we're going to do a 45 degree cut. So the, you're going to hide the joints of the rails inside that mortar section inside the post. Now, I do it a little bit differently to a lot of people. What I'll do is I will run the bottom rail of straddle two spaces, two spans, so 4.8 meters. The top rail, I will alternate the joints. So my first rail will be 2.4 meters, and then I'll go my 4.8s. So we're not having two joints on the one post. They're going to be offset. It just makes the fence a bit stronger. If you've got the capacity, slide the rails in from the end of the fence and along through. And here's uh, my helpers, my son-in-law and his neighbor pushing the uh, 
pushing the rails in and along. And it works really well, you can see it butt together. Now on those joints, we're going to get the drill and drill a hole. And I use these guys. Now these are a 75 millimeter Type 17 bugle head screw. Internal drive hex head. I think that's a five millimeter drive socket inside. These things are galvanized. If you are using treated pine, you must use galvanized fixtures. Otherwise, the salts will react with the steel and you, the fence will fall apart not too far down the track. All right, now we've got all our rails in. The chain link. Make sure that you have the height between your top and bottom mortars, the right height for the chain link. Now most chain link you can buy at 912 millimeters, which is three feet. A roofing screw in either corner, pull it tight, and then little U-shaped staples, you know, they're the heavy galvanized staples that you can tap in. Put them around and it'll look great. Do that a couple of days after, because you're going to give the fence a bit of curry as, you, as you're hammering that. You can buy a painted chain link. My daughter got uh, a black chain link and it looks great. Fits in really well. Packing up. Here we go again. I've got the Sys Roll. It's such a nice, handy cart. Wheel it around. All the gears up to the car. The rest of the stuff's in the wheelbarrow. Throw it in the back of the car and I'm home. There you go. That was all there is to it. That wasn't too hard. I bet you're all going to race out and build a fence now. <laughs> okay. Remember the normal things up here. Subscribe to the channel, hit the like button, there's the Facebook page. Keep on coming back. Thanks for watching. See you next time.